and here we are um everyone because before i do introductions chat be so kind to let us know that you can see us and hear us appropriately otherwise we are just silent talking heads which defeats the whole purpose and chat Bueller. Bueller, chat Bueller. Okay, I can, <laughs> learn, I can, I can hear us on my browser, okay. so we will be going ahead. Uh, anyways, welcome everyone to this extra high energy edition, sarcasm included, <laughs> of uh, Talk Nerdy to Me, uh, Cybernation Uncensors in the you know, late night talk show or mid afternoon talk show if you're in Australia or whenever the mm -hmm. hell you like talk show if you're watching the VOD. Um, I am your perpetually disheveled host, uh, Alex Maxwell. I am also the uh, production one of, the, one of the production managers with separation uncensored uh you can find me under maxwell on the discord and and you can find me tomorrow at 5 p.m pacific doing uh very manic uh nanomancer things and cyborg uh which i i honestly can't wait for um but i am just i'm one of one head of the nerdy cerberus here um I have, of course, joined by my usual cohorts, uh, Gomi and Rem. By all means, uh, we'll make your, their introductions. Gomi, we'll start with you. All right. Um, yeah, I'm just the random tech nerd off the street. Um, and yes, you can also find me on the Cyber Nation Uncensored Discord thingy under Gomi. And um, yes, I do exist online, but it's a small thing. Um, I run the Impossible Emporium, which is just a random blog thing that I've been doing for a while. Um, over to you, Rem. Hi, everyone. I am totally energized, I promise. Uh, and I am here uh, with you to talk about all things gaming that I could find on the interwebs that happened this month. Um, and I am uh, the CEO of Rem Alternatives Productions. Uh, we're actually, we just finished streaming, I think, on Twitch for a campaign of Prowlers and Paragons. Um, and then... What else do I do? Oh, I'm also the community and marketing director for Catalyst Game Labs. So, hi everyone. All right. So, pardon me. Uh, so we'll just uh, be diving right into it as we usually do. Um, which I, um, since the recently uh, tech has always been a bit of a uh, bit of humor and doom and gloom. So sorry to always push you on the spot right off the stop right off the okay. right off the top, Gomi. But hey, it's fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look. In terms of tech, doom and gloom, um, we've got it all, um, but I'm going to save some of it for next month because I want to get some more bits and pieces together. Mm. Um, but, you know, people are coming out and now saying that um, humans need to act together to overcome the threat to civilization that is representative of artificial intelligence. Um, things always go this way and that way. I know I just read this morning um, here in Australia, they're now looking at laws around artificial intelligence and what you can use it for, what you can't use it for, whether or not our laws are up to spec to actually deal with this problem. You know, at a white paper that's come out of, a, of the government, I haven't read the white paper yet, but I probably should, given that it's my own locale. Um, but you can sort of see a, a lot of that sort of stuff happening. Um, also, you know, waves of, of job axes to be falling. Um, the one I picked up on was that IBM plans to replace nearly 8,000 jobs with artificial intelligences or AI-like systems. Um, but I look at that and go, well, how about I flip the script and actually explore that a little because what IBM is saying is they're going to be cutting 8,000 of the low-level jobs. That means people inside that business are going to be busier managing all these little AI systems that should be doing something. And then those that have left IBM have wonderful knowledge of its inner workings, current R&D and whatever else goes on within that um, monolithic business. And these are the people who can probably step out into the workforce and go, I'm going to put together either a small business or a one-person business and try and push something that I want to be developing. So I can see 
the structure and nature of work really changing in this coming decade, really. Um, as terrifying as that idea is, um, it's the old giant Chinese curse of may you live in interesting times. Yeah, and it's the... Uh, I, I think, like, decade, I think, is a bit long on the tooth, right? Because uh, we've already seen a, a massive uh, change in, like, change in struggle and work, uh, like, workforce dichotomy uh, just just over quarantine you know the you know yes. every, everyone in in you know be it, well workforce group from education to you know game design to you know just your you know your, your oh. more your more standard cubicle jobs not not, not that i'm yeah. calling those average but um but yeah you have you know people like that have been working at home since you know the start of 2020 and now they're trying to roll back to you know to get people back in the office and so yeah. I, hopefully people will be like oh, we've we've endured this we can endure the the next thing um oh but... look it's one wave after another of the tsunami yeah right? um, it's also going to be i mean there's going to be the whole conversation of workers rights and it's going to go through like it's not only just the technology appearing but then it's going to get you know uh you have to go through all of the the political process and stuff like yeah. that to because I mean, if it's replacing, if AI replaces workers, unemployment goes up, and blah blah blah. Um, well, we're talking about the writers' strike last month, mm -hmm. and you know that's a big concern for the writers, but it's the whole production in in movie making. You know, um, the whole spectrum of of where you use this tool, because this is this is a tool that's great at throwing random shit at a wall and going, "Hey, as a human, I like that stuff." Um, it reminds me of a, a great quote that I've, I've lifted from John Cleese from Monty Python fame. He did a talk in the 80s on creativity, right, and said, look, you know, computers can generate more ideas better than anybody, but only a human can smell if it tastes good. They can look at it and go, yeah, that's the one worth pursuing or that's the one worth developing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that comes into that major point between what separates us from our current bout of AI systems is they're good at generating random shit, but it still requires an editor to go through, proof it, correct it, fix it, rip out the mistakes, all that kind of stuff to get a more workable product. And I know there's going to be people out there who are going to be trying to just churn out as much shit as they can and hope that one or two of their created products that they're throwing at Amazon or wherever and flooding the market with will actually hit big for them. But that's just creating a much longer tail because what people are going to do now, I think personally, is hopefully become more discerning and go, you know what, I, I, want, a, I want a well crafted story. You know, I went, I mentioned a couple of months back, I read back through the Harry Dresden stuff and reading it through the second time, it's gone, oh, you bastard, you've planted all these little seeds in here. Mm -hmm. and it allowed me to appreciate and enjoy that story so much more because of the craftsmanship that went into creating it. Because when you look at AI, it's just, it's the first little bit of icing on the cake and that's it. I'm There's no substance in, underneath. I'm interested though, too, in like the limitations of AI based on what's out there. Like it's supposed to be learning and learning and learning, but like, it's when, not, when you look at when you look at media though like it, when you look at film it's all like it's not all it is a lot of remakes it is a lot of sequels it is a lot of comic book movies it is a lot of i'm not slamming it i'm i'm all about mm. that stuff but like where are the new ideas where where's the creativity where's the well, you look at the, the creative thing right one of the best creative engines i've seen it has to be the comic book industry not because they're just crafting stories, because they've got to write a good story to get sales, but they're also going through and storyboarding the whole bloody thing. So, you know, for a movie production thing, they can look at a comic and go, I can see that now as a movie, or I can start thinking, it can trigger people to start going, this is cool, I can start using this. It'd just and, be great. Hmm? It, it, sorry to interrupt you, but it'd just be great, yeah. like, if, if, if we're going to create AI, and, and we are, yeah. uh, why... Why are you starting? Why, why art? Like, go go do the jobs no one wants to do. Well, <laughs> like, please, just go. Like, go go make me French fries. Like, yeah. please. Like, <laughs> yes, not no, the, the, the jobs. Are the, the jobs that are meant to, 
meant to do that, you know, automated systems that make food or whatever. Well, what's, what's funny is and it's I, a I, lower I, standard. I was at ACD um, last week. It's not an artificial int intelligence. It's a robot. But uh, they had one of those robot servers come out with the server following it. So it was like, is this worth the expense? Of so, <laughs> so, yes, it, it, sorry, yeah, no, uh, Bender is training. You know, he needs to have a, a, a real person observe. Um, oh, yeah, that is, yeah. Uh, I honestly, like, why art? I think because, especially in a uh, because a lot of this, you know, is is has its its roots getting in deepest in you know in in corporate in corporate America, um, and it's for the longest time it's like, oh, you're an artist, so go get a real job. And it's like where art, you know, the arts in in corporate America are not is not seen as real work for the most part. And then it's like, oh well, eh, we don't we don't need artists. Like, like, do you like yeah, but... do you like movies, sport? Do it's, you know, like... it's... It's still though, like it's still the overprivileged that are going to say that about because they say that about food service, they say that yeah. about gas station attendants and grocery yeah. store workers. Like we don't need people. Full stop. Really is what they're saying. Right. Um, and but I, yeah, go. I wonder too because my mind is very ADHD right now. Like if, if the trend continues does this change our society? Cause like, you know, there, there's the divide on like socialism, bad and socialism. Yay. But like, oh, I, I wonder socialism. for, okay. for the, I wonder for the U S though, as a capitalistic country where it's like, okay, but if you, you still need to take care of your people. So if you replace these jobs, how are you taking care of these people and how are they um, like, okay. Turn into the a the more cynical country? part of me that is extremely dystopian is saying they're not. Quite simply, in a very straightforward term, I think they're going to murder us all. Yeah, but you have a purpose to be biofuel for the, the <laughs> for the new robot working class. Yeah, um, no, no, it's like we'll just reconstitute you into soil and green. Come on, yeah, people! It's, it's, yes, it's the Matrix. We, you know, we become batteries for the robot workers. Oh, uh, you mentioned the Matrix. I've got the next article sitting right here. But please, sorry. No, it's but it's the it's the, yeah it is that thing of you know the you know. Every, every as terrible as it is, every every culture civilization is built on the back of an expendable workforce. Uh, be that yes. yeah, be yeah, be that you know, slave labor, AI, corporate drones, etc. Um, and it's always looking to see what the m most expendable workforce currently is. Um, or just a way so to, to get things for cheaper. If robots and AI become take those jobs of the expendable, mm -hmm. quote unquote, then who's the new expendable? It's what do the new ex what do the old expendables do? So we we wake the fuck up. Well, apparently, <laughs> yeah. According to what the answer you guys just gave, um, they're dying in the streets. So who's mm -hmm. the new expendable for uh, us yeah. to get rid of next? Yeah, oh, that'll be the middle class, which is slowly decaying into poverty. As the what is it precariat, where they you know their job expects to, expectations and stuff are very precarious, and they can't really they're surviving week to week. Um, you know, having lived that lifestyle at a time, um, yeah, not fun. Yeah, no. It's um, and on, like, I'd, I'd argue it's like, you know, they they want you know AI to take like the menial jobs, like, cor like corporate dick hole number, you know, you know, number one dash A. Just he just warms a seat in a, in an office and signs memos. Have the AI do that. You're literally yeah. having, you're just, you're just, you have the, the, um, you, you yeah, have I want to see the AI oh. that signs the memos and warms that seat. Like, yeah, yeah, because it's like, like, AI. like, what are you doing besides being a nepotism little shit? Anyways, that's a, well, it, Vox had a great article. Shit. welcome to the brand. Anyways, yeah, um, Vox had a great article about people who, whose desk job is to basically sit there and do nothing. Mm -hmm. They've worked out how to game the system so that they're producing nothing and they're just sort of filling a space. Um, oh, damn. ADHD BD brains all over the place and it's not focusing at the moment. ADHD BD, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, with the whole AI thing, you can see the uh, and that's gone. I'm just going to move on. Um, I'll get back to it if I think of it. But um, in terms of the Matrix stuff that you just mentioned, um, some smartass has done a mod for Skyrim that uses. Um, Open AI's whisper to do text to speech, uh, chat GDP to do NPC conversations, and oh, sorry, the whisper stuff is speech to text. 
Then it goes through ChatGDP to do the MPC dialogue stuff, and then it gets spat out at the other end with teach uh, tech tech. <laughs> English, I hate this language. Try that again. Uh, tech <laughs> to speech. Text, text to speech, uh, X V A synth, basically to take and they've sampled it on the voice lines of all the act, act voice actors in the, in that game, so that you can talk to an NPC and have it respond with its own unique voice line. Um, now this is a mod that somebody has just done. I've saw, saw a video on it just recently, but I can see games pushing hard for that area, which opens the door to the matrix where people will want to walk in. Yeah, all that story told me is that there's going to be a new method and style of pornography. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and this is why um, we're called Separation Uncensored, though. Um. <laughs> um, and we're on this channel, yeah. Okay. Um, but as you can see, there's, I mean, with any sort of tech advance like that, those industries will try and exploit it first to keep things fresh and new, I suppose. Um, but I can see it also spilling over into the games industry as they try and um, capture this idea and, and make use of it with more open dialogue, especially if you can uh, develop NPCs with a bit of a profile that they push certain directions as opposed to others. But in the last 20, 30 years, we've done a lot of research, uh, sorry, academics have done a lot of research into um, what they call the Big Five, um, which is a psychological model of how the brain thinks and the traits that certain people, so things, things like extrovert versus introvert, things like open to new experiences versus not, all those kind of things that, um, and they can basically break it down to these five different traits that they can then uh, not quantify, but describe a person with. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's thanks. my that's my secret yeah. cap. I don't think. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, we'll um, that's, a good, that's a good question from from chat from uh, PWB and in PWB and D. Uh, will role players want to play with human or AI GMs? Um, so funny things. This from from me personally as an anecdote. I've seen. Uh, I've done things where storytellers have use chat gdp to, to like generate a response and then there'll be those who will use a you know a pure a, like a purely you know personally written response as a, like using my you know myself and i'm as non-biased as possible the the chat gdp one like that the gm the the ai gm makes very long verbose um almost like overtly popular language to the point where it's like it's very luxury so you read it like, so you'll be either be reading it, you know, if it's like a, like an adventure prompt, or if someone's reciting what's being read, it's, eh. Um, but then when you there's there's something when you have a, it's either off the cuff or when something that AI doesn't really get is a lot of simile. Like if I go in and I, and I if I just if I describe it, this NPC has you know like there's like an npc who who chuckles you know they're doing like a some sleuthing thing call it call of cthulhu right they're in a speakeasy um the the ai will say you know you know they'll like you know mr you know mr archibald jenkins chuckled richly but then i go and say archibald jenkins shoulders heaved in a in a silent chuckle that came out of his that bubbled from his throat in a tone like warm dark chocolate like that's the difference it's the beautiful example. It's 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 the spice of it. The AI will go, this is what a laugh is, but it doesn't have the contextual like flavor that to give some slide and set dressing. Yeah. So yeah, start it. But um we we can go on for we, we could just talk AI shit. No, I'm move segment, away from that. But uh <laughs> I'm happy to I'm happy always happy to move on from the Doom and Gloom conversation. Yeah, um, but, uh, <laughs> but they basically it's not, I'm not moving away from Doom and Gloom yet because I'm talking cybersecurity, so I'm sorry. No! Um I mean look just as like two little snippets for um dungeon masters and players out there who are doing high tech stuff. Uh we now have the capacity to fire a laser through an old style keyhole or a hole in the wall and can use it to do non-line of sight detection on people in a space. So fire the laser, see how the light bounces around the room and see how, where the people are in that room. 
without actually going in there. Um, I know it seems sort of sci-fi, but, you know, that's kind of, think, it's basically just like sonar, but with light. Yeah. Um, you know, think of like where I live, uh, crossing the way to work, there's bats in the park. Old fruit, you know, fruit bats, hundreds, thousands of the bloody things. And they've got that particular screech that was used to model sonar so that underwater we could detect where other boats are, but these guys use them for flying through the, the environments that they're in. In a similar vein, uh, and this is a much earlier article, um, scientists can now use Wi-Fi to see through walls, work out where people are. And I assume it's explicitly people, and it's got to do something with probably the person's nervous system or how their body's constructed so it can be detected. So, you know, these two little tricks combined together, <clears throat> I could see someone doing a cyberpunk-style run, hitting the net system, and this, uh, I'll get in my personal bugbear in a minute, but I'll finish describing this, and basically just scan the place, work out where the people are, work out how many people are on site, where the prisoners are kept or whatever they need to hit, shine some lights in there, see the light bounces and that sort of stuff. And this is something you could buy from a drone and just fly it over the top as it zooms past. Um, <clears throat> basically the equivalent of um, small-scale radar, but through walls and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but, yeah, it's, I mean, all that sort of thing. But my personal bugbear is in, and I don't like playing Netrunners in Cyberpunk, I don't like playing Deckers in Shadowrun, because as someone who has worked so long in the, the tech industry as an IT person and now teaching it, it is depressing because security is it's not a high bar it's it's a low bar it's it's really low um you think of nigerian scams and how well they work they work because people are not suspecting but the, it goes broader than that there's three links that I'm, i can throw into the chat if you want um of unsecured webcams around the world anybody can log on have a look at this webcam and see what's going on there and this is, you know, stuff at the front of buildings, stuff that's, you know, wherever. And these insecurities are commonplace. Um, the most commonest password in the world. What do you think it is? Password. That's number nine on the list. Damn it. <laughs> number one is one, two, three, four. See. Incredible. I have to get the same combination on my luggage. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but the thing is that if you look at, um, like, there's a brand of routers used to connect networks together in IT and by Cisco, and the username and password combination is usually admin, admin, or admin Cisco, or Cisco, Cisco, and that gives you full access to the device. Now, any IT person worth their salt will change that immediately. But, and this, I mean... This is the IT infrastructure of the world, you know, and so I find it personally really difficult to play a Netrunner or a Decker because I look at it and go, it's not like that. It's, we could only wish. Um, yeah. Teach some of these people, please. It's not like that. And it's, it's, also, it's also one of those things that needs to be, you know, that it, it needs to be like easily consum you know, consumable to uh, people who... People like me, who whose brain is a D6 and it is square and smooth. Um, <laughs> and he was like, I think I don't want to do you know, special code magic um, and not get an aneurysm in the process. But yeah, nice that, yeah the cybersecurity has been as the cyberspace itself has been. Yeah, that's the, the new frontier of warfare, which is oh, terrifying. Yeah, horrible mess. Horrible, but horrible mess. We've we've mentioned cyberpunk. We've mentioned Shadowrun and talked about D6s for brands. Um, fantastic segue to switch over to something hopefully a bit more chipper in the uh the, the ttrpg space rem take us away oh goodness i gotta change gears now guys uh, <laughs> um all right so talking about uh conventions coming up um so acd is a trade show that just ended um we've got origins game fair coming up we've got GameCon canada and calgary coming up uh we've got um san diego comic-con is the end of june and uh i mean that's the chonker uh here in the states in terms of yeah. uh nerd cons yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've missed my nerd mecca i can't wait to go back i i've never been um i might end up getting to to get in there this time but we'll see um 
if not this year, maybe next year. But uh, yeah, so cool conventions coming up, really exciting stuff. Of course, uh, then we've got, um, we're not far, you know, the countdown begins to Gen Con, which really is, is for gamers what it's all about. Um, one of the things I wanted to, to dive into, though, a little bit was um, VTT. We haven't really gotten to talk about that on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I kind of have a, a segue to this into the next to- topic as well. But um, gosh, VTT. Um, and, and what does it mean for the game industry? Obviously, it, it took off when COVID happened because, oh, gosh, if we can't play in person. Everett had their preferences before, and a lot of people leaned away from gaming online. Um, and then, you know, it kind of the, the, the lifestyle and culture shift kind of happened where COVID happened. And if you wanted to keep gaming, you were going to have to learn to do it online. Yeah. Um, so I, it's much more commonplace now. So we've got, you know, the basics, we've got roll 20. Um, we've got, I don't know if you guys have used fantasy grounds at all. No, I have. Yes. It's a clunky interface. It, it it has a learning curve. It can do some really cool things, but honestly, the amount of time it takes to learn and then get your players to learn it as well is is to me it's not worth it. Um, mm. There's Foundry that can do you know all the beautiful stuff um, that Foundry can do, um, and then there's a new one that just got uh, funded on Kickstarter, um, and that was Alchemy. Um, I don't have the, the pack of cards right here, but, uh, I got to meet the creator, uh, Asher at Gamma and, um, the people I've been talking to, they've already got like steam forge partnerships. They've got Kobold press partnerships. They've got, they've got a lot of big partnerships for horror sci-fi fantasy, uh, games that are going to be available on their platform when it launches. Um, and from what I've been hearing, uh, from the industry, there's a, a lot of thought that this is going to be the VTT to replace um, Roll20. To we'll replace Roll20 to be like the go to for streamers. Oh, okay. um, so I haven't gotten to see it myself, but I've been kind of like ear to the ground on, on what that really means. And, and um, as someone that uses a lot of VTTs, uh, I'm very excited to see what that well, looks it's... like as it comes. You kind of have to these days, especially with the tyranny of distance and the way people move around and such. Mm. Yeah. Um, so. the, for, for VTTs, I think is because having played with, with just, about, just about all of them, except for like, I've, I've built things in Tailspire because uh, it's, it's 3D Legos and uh, my, you know, my, my zen is to build shit. Um, <laughs> so, Minecraft uh, rocks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> but uh Having played in Fantasy Grounds and having played in, in Roll Twenty, both like both have their perks. Uh, once I like it, the like fa- like Fantasy Grounds, I think is because it is for when I picked it up, it was new and it was new and different with the UI from uh from Roll Twenty. But it for me, it's it's much smoother. And I, there's just the I, maybe it's a purely like Pavlovian like dog clicker thing. But when I hear the Roll Twenty, weep. Uh, whenever the the dice go off, I just immediately go. Ah. Um, <laughs> but um, yes, but the I I've been but I've been loving Fantasy Grounds and I've been playing it. Um, I've been it's because the when we've been using it for Cyberpunk and its stuff is just like super intuitive. Um, for Fantasy Grounds, I believe so. Yes. Oh, you're crazy. Um, but the uh whenever it's, it's it's the same thing whenever like a new mmo comes out it says we're we're gonna be the wow killer um yeah i said i'm like but wow held that top position for 10 15 years yeah well, and, and it's still kicking and oh how long has roll 20 been around and because it, 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 that's a lot of it is a you know a, a you know yes a, a price thing right a lot of people can pick mm-hmm. and play you know roll 20 for for free and you know do your hand-drawn maps and your you know, it's whatever well, see, whatever you want to do a friend of mine uh rob started developing uh g tove um got to be pre-covid pre-2018 or something uh he had a bit of time uh free for himself so he started doing a vtt because what he it, none of them could handle the 3dness like flying characters and that sort of stuff and when we were playing a pathfinder campaign we found we needed that you know to be able to raise the character above the, the thing and work out or spell distances and stuff so um he's been developing that for uh got a while now um, I've just dropped the link into a Reddit article on it. I'll 
whatever. Um, but, you know, it's a stripped back VTT because depending on, on what you want, you know, you can pick up a VTT with all the bells and whistles. Um, I notice a lot of people use Discord over the built-in voice chat stuff because they find that easier. It really depends on which way you want to be going with this sort of stuff. Well, I, I think also it's like my home group uses Discord, and while we play on Roll20, there's all of the, like, side chat that happens in Discord where we say something funny and everyone drops 15 memes. Yep. Um, you can't do that in in roll 20. So it's a nice place to, to do your social stuff. Yeah. Uh, so you have your videos, you yeah. have your chat, you have your, and like, if you want to step up uh, discord, you can always add dice maiden to it, which is a bot that will automate dice rolls for you. Yeah. So. You know, I, you know, bots that automate dice bots so that you can, you can throw, you can like compile like playlist links and throw on a playlist. If you want to do like, you know, your ambient sounds and also, you know, you know, Sirenscape is a lovely sponsor to the channel, which you can just like drop a link in, everyone can click on it and you all have the, sh the same shared ambient noise. Um, it's, I, yeah, I, I use Sirenscape even before I joined in with this, it was Cybernation Uncensored and I, I would, you know, just have it like on my laptop and HDMI to the, the, or the TV and play it. And it was maximum spooky for Call of Cthulhu. I loved it. Um, <laughs> But yes, the VTTs, the because the the big thing that I'm seeing, so, you know, like a few like a few patrons that I follow, um, if you're in like if for a, a few different genres, the big thing is, uh, at least for me, is if you can get um, effects and like what effects you can get and animated maps, uh, mm -hmm. and and also and also it's, it's just like general like, uh, it's like general like you know, ease of use, right? Um, the thing that was like. It was so it was so cool to get to work, but it was a absolute pain in the ass. Um, for my for my Sunday group, I ran uh, Red Chrome Cargo and was able to get a a map with like the the moving train. Mm -hmm. So and so it was like immersive as shit. But it took me two goddamn weeks to get that to work on Roll Twenty with like all the sort of plugins, and it was like mm -hmm. got you know give us something to like to bake that stuff in. Um, There's certain. Good. There's certain VTTs that do things, some things better than others. Like yes. Foundry is, is from what I hear, I haven't used Foundry yet, but is better for the effects. Uh, yeah. It's it's easier to use. Um, but I'm interested, especially for, for alchemy, I'm very interested because it's not alchemy that I'm hearing the good stuff from, it's the their partners. Um, so to be able to say, like, these are the gaming companies that are like, yes, this is the one. Um, that that's what has my attention yeah I, um it's it's the it's it's, 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 that, it's that same thing of like you know the, the like the wow killer paradigm you're just like yeah having gone through that for 10 goddamn years as a gamer i'm gonna when alchemy comes out i'm gonna sit back and just you know, you know steep my fingers in a palpatine fashion and wait and see how it pans out in those first four mm -hmm. like four to six months and if it, yeah. does, if it does great i'll certainly give it a try um yeah it, I, I'm interested in seeing because I want to. I do want to learn Foundry because I w I want to see what's out there. I want to be knowledgeable with, of what's out there, um, with the exception of my next topic. Segue, segue <laughs> is so. I, this is literally I wrote down the buzzwords for this for you guys for the topic and then did no further research because I refuse. Um, mm -hmm. D and D one is dead, and Watsi has announced a new VTT. Yeah. <laughs> the end. That's all I want to say about it. I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going back to the tech talk where it's like, I don't want to depress myself and and yeah. We're, we're, there's a state draw great eyeballs branded. to yeah, that's if the, you yeah. if you are so inclined, please go research it. But um I will not be partaking. Um, well they've already invested a bucket load of money in it from what I hear. Um will it be the game to end all games, I seriously doubt it. Um, you look at, like, I played Eye the Beholder and Bard's Tale, one, two, and three, all the way through. Loved those games back in the 90s. But in terms of VTT experience, it's um, limited and channeled because what makes the gaming experience, you know, the stupid shit you do, the crap you can get away with, 
mm-hmm. like this one time we convinced a dragon to loan us its time traveling cup and then give us a liter of its blood so that we could time travel and then you know having a quick swig where well, all the characters are in the future and i just looked across at the gm and was going no i'm not going to do that to you um because it's just going to pop out a full beard <laughs> Um, but the thing is that these are kind of stupid stories that you walk away with as a player or as a, as a GM. It's like, yeah. this crip, stupid crap happened. Yeah. But that's the fun. That, 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 that's, that's what will always make tabletop role playing more appealing than a video game experience for me. Because I can play Baldur's Gate 3 and like, sure, great music, looks very pretty, but I can't be the strength monk warforged who installed a bag of devouring in my goddamn mouth to grapple the goblin and eat it. Well, and you have the same <laughs> story as everyone else when you play the game, right? Like yeah. everyone has the same experience. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think it's interesting. And and along those lines as well, like it's it, not just me, but the the companies that are stepping away from D&D more and more, uh, like Pathfinder, I, I saw them at, at uh, ACD and they did a very brief comment on the ORC uh, before saying, hey, this is what we're taking, like for for Pathfinder second edition, this is what we're going to take away. So they're not mm. doing chromatic dragons, mm. things like that, because um, uh, they want to separate from 5e mm, uh, yeah. and, and Dungeons and Dragons. Same thing with Kobold Press. All of their products have been, or almost all of their products have been um, third-party content for Dungeons and & Dragons. And mm. now they've their Kickstarter, they're at $800,000 right now. And they um, are launching, it's the Valiant. Um, Tales of the Valiant. Uh, Tal- Tales of the Valiant. And uh, it's doing so well. Mm. And it's their new system. So it's not just a setting. It's not just extended rules for 5e. It's their mm. own setting. Um, well, yeah. Also, have you seen the cover for it? No. Um, you oof. should go take a close look um, yeah. and Google see what CLA. kind of let see what kind of statement they may or may not be making with the oh, cover okay. of Tales of the Valley. Yeah. There, there's there's a zoomed in one that's just the dragon. Find the full image uh, and uh, yeah, see what they're trying to say there. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, that, is, that is a that is a dragon frying, just straight up deep frying a wizard, who happens to be standing on some sort of precipice. Or I'm looking the wrong spot, I guess. C- c- coast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Yes. Um, linking back to what you're saying about um, uh, Pathfinder and Pezo. Um, I'm just going to do a quick recap of bundles of holding and uh, humble bundles because there's a Starfinder humble bundle of 27 items digital uh, with two additional uh, printed uh, physical products. Uh, there's a super, no, sorcery and super science uh, sort of pulpy kind of vibe thing. Uh, DCC Lankama Thieves uh, for Dungeon Core Classics, that is. And um, a bunch of mythos related stuff by Ark Dream um, in just in terms of the RPG books that are available on either Humble Bundle or Bundle of Holding. Um, then, of course, you've got a whole range of different comics. Um, Studio Foligo has got uh, Girl Genius stuff, uh, 20 different volumes in two packs. They've re-released one from earlier. Um, and then, of course, there's Leading Ladies by Image Comics, which is 51 different comics. Uh, and then... I. There's a manga bundle by Hiro Matsushima, um, which is Fairy Tale Eden Zero Rave Master. Um, all of those are sort of out and about uh, for those of you who are into such things. Um, and I know there's a couple other things as well on Humble Bundle, basically a bunch of audiobooks. Some cyber security stuff and some animation I'm, stuff. I'm not well. seeing any of your links. Uh, I don't think you have permission to post links. Oh, I, I thought I just did. Oh, here I thought this was someone who's just spamming profanity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be true, but. Yeah, it's just star, 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 space, star, 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 space, oh, star, star, star. Space. Okay, well, I'll throw it across to our chat here and um, get. It's sorted for 
somebody else with authority to post things because mm-hmm. I'm used to having no authority whatsoever. <clears throat> but, you know, just in, in that space, there's a lot of stuff out there and it's uh, really cool to see. Well, so anyway, the very last thing I have, uh, and I want to, we are 10 minutes until I'm allowed to go to bed. So uh, to move this on as quickly as possible, uh, Star Wars Shatterpoint, really exciting Star Wars miniatures com- skirmish combat game. If you love minis, if you love Star Wars, if you don't, you're wrong. It's a pretty cool product. Yeah, it is. The, I, I've, I've been, cause there was like the, was it the, uh, the last one they had that was like at the, it was not Edge of the Empire, but it was like, 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 like Empire Skirmish or something, that and TIE Fighter, yeah. or uh, the X Wing, or technically, uh, shitloads of fun. Um, when they, when they had the, the, the Maldi Crow, uh, that was the only thing I ran because I love Jedi Academy. Um, but, uh, as to, wrap us up um my segment's relatively short because all of my all all of my you know nerdy news uh goes to geek culture here all of my nerdy news geek culture shit is just going into summer um it is the you know the summertime of cinema as you know movies tv shows come out um gonna start us off really quick with um just the movie i i picked up and saw i went out to go see last night on a whim um because I enjoyed the first one. This was a was it a a, a Spider Man uh, across the Spider Verse. Yep. Uh, it was the it was all the, all the good of the of the first one. Um, and no sequelitis. Uh, my oh. un, my my only gripe of the film um is that like that that movie and its predecessor need an ep- an epilepsy warning before. Any credits yes. roll, because uh, I I don't have epilepsy, or you know, like any or any such similar condition. But that so there were some segments where it was just a lot. Um, but the you know the soundtrack was sublime. The you know the visuals were fantastic. There were a a bunch of great little Easter eggs in there for the you know the discerning Marvel Spider Man fan. Um, Good. Yeah, it was the artistically fantastic. There was a, a segment where. Uh, I got like Disco Elysium vibes um, from like from one of the like one of the the, spy- the spiders like universes, and I was like, oh hell yeah, no, it's shivers, tell me more. Um, but it was fantastic, definitely worth going to go see on the big screen. Um, on things coming out on the on the smaller screen, I know that I'm definitely looking forward to Extraction Two, um, which is a the first extraction being a, a John Wick clone starring Chris Hemsworth, and it just involves him I, just, I, just throwing at throwing these, you know the terrorist assholes around. You know, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, well, it's extraction. It's it's on it's on Netflix. It stars yeah. uh, Chris Hemsworth as his angriest version of himself, um, and he just bodies people. It's fantastic. Mm. The second one's coming out. I have out. to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unrelated reasons. Yeah, for, 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 no, yeah. like definitely go watch it. The um, yeah. the, the director, it's, it's the, yeah, the director is the stu- it was the stunt coordinator for uh, for Endgame. So it's like, you know, he's um, it's 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 good. It's up there, and the second one's coming out. Uh, it's either end of this month or into uh, in, in, into July. Is um, it a movie or a show? Movie. Uh, and it's on Netflix. Yes. Yeah. Husband, we have a Netflix date. With my other husband. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, for, as for for me, as for shows, I'm a, I'm looking forward to Ahsoka, um, because mm-hmm. uh, it is they, they're they're turning my my favorite uh, Legends book into the plot of that show, um, so I can't wait. As for other shows currently going on that I've been enjoying, for those of you that enjoy manga and those of you who played Skyrim as a as a strength main and still did the main storyline, this is the show for you. Uh, M- Mashal, Magic and Muscle. It is a kick in the teeth to Harry Potter, and it's fucking hilarious. Um, if, imagine if, if Harry Potter was a, a muggle meathead and that's the show <laughs> um it's yep. absolutely hilarious um i cannot recommend it enough it takes like i tend to giggle a lot but there's there's just, there comes a certain point when a show makes me spit take a beer and exfoliate my sinuses with it where i just like okay you've won 
Um, <laughs> no, it's a uh, all in all grand old time. I mm. uh, fist wizard the anime. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it that show is. I've got. Uh, I should have worn that shirt tonight. Damn it! Uh, so, yeah, it is muscle wizard cast fist. Um, the show. Um, <laughs> it's absolutely goddamn hilarious. Um, but God, what else? Because there's there's so much stuff coming out. Oh, um, Good Omen season two. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah, twenty seventh of July. Yeah, twenty sixth yeah, of July. Good Omen season two. We get to see the you know like the, the absolute like like best gay couple in cinema at it once again. Uh, cannot wait. Um, there's uh, the the Marvels, which I I hope is good. Um, just because you know, <coughs> and the Miss Marvel and, or Captain Marvel rather is a a, a big favorite in my house. Um, so I, I want that show to be good. Uh, it has some Freaky Friday vibes, which like, I hope is fun and funny, but it's, you know, Marvel stuff can, yeah, you know, be either or, but I <clears throat> hope, you know, don't expect the, don't expect much, but hope for the best. Um, hmm. um, I do have to drop in this one other one. Um, I assume you guys love the Muppets. Everybody grew up on the Muppets. Oh, yeah. At least I hope so. Um, because the Electric Mayhem have a number one album. What? Yeah, it's only on the kids' charts, but the Electric Mayhem, the house band for the Muppets, debuted at number thirteen and is now a number one of the kids' charts. Oh my god! Um, they're also twenty-three on the album charts. The, yeah, ah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, as my three personal heroes out of the Muppets, Animal, Beaker, and the Swedish Chef, um, covers all the coherency I can manage most days. Um, yeah, so Dr. Teeth is <laughs> Um, but that I just thought was just amazing, light, cheerful piece of news. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, the segue to music, it's something that, that blindsided me at the start of the week. Uh, Avenged Sevenfold is back. Um, sorry, what? Yeah, Avenged Sevenfold, uh, is they're releasing their first full album, um, for the first time in like six years. Oh, um, wow. Which, one, I, 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 I felt the carbon dating happen. Uh, they're releasing a few new songs every day. It looks like uh, the the first one they dropped is called Nobody, and oh my god, um, that's a when when we're done here, we're almost done. Uh, listen to it. I've I I never knew what a like the 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 baby of a guitar and a synthesizer was, but it <laughs> sounds beautiful when it cries. Um, but as the. <laughs> You it's, should also, if you're not listening to Jason Charles Miller, you should be. Uh, he wrote the theme music music for Critical Role the first two seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but he also does, he he has a ton of stuff. But like one of my favorites is he does the Pokemon theme song as a ballad. And I, I like, I have never like sung my heart out since like <laughs> I was 13 seeing Celine Dion <laughs> in my airbrush. <laughs> That's fantastic, but uh, yeah, because that was a uh, for you know for those of you that have seen uh that have seen you know uh Stranger Things what, season three um the like that that song nobody is it has been like my Kate Bush song for the past week uh so it's like I I can keep listening to it it just doesn't fucking get old but no it doesn't I, I uh, look up out of the small collection of vinyl that I actually have I have three Kate Bush albums and that's one of them. Mm -hmm. And it's just, mm -hmm. it's glorious to just sort of sit down and go, oh, yes. But uh, to wrap us off, um, wrap us up, wrap us up and start sending us off for the evening, uh, as I try to usually do, I have a book recommendation or a series recommendation. Um, this is one uh, that I guess comes with a, a bit of a trigger warning because there is a lot of intense subject matter in this series, uh, but it is uh, The Poppy War. Uh, the hmm. Poppy War, but I, I just want to let me bring up my show notes really quick. Uh, the the Poppy War series, uh, by by uh by R. F. Kwan. R. Kwan. Yeah, R. Kwan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, because I I love fantasy and sci-fi that like steps outside of like the like like the common norms. Uh, the Poppy War mm. being um being very uh really uh, like uh. A, like imperial chinese in its flavor um the thing that and without 
without getting into spoilers, just as a forewarning, it definitely starts off feeling like a, a young adult novel. And then um, it gear shifts and it is anything but. Um, there Ooh, okay. thing, things that happen. They, it, it was inspired by the second Sino Japanese war. Um, if you know your history, yeah. a lot of bad things happened in that. And there's mm. those things get covered in these books. So it is, it's very grim dark. Uh, so, you know, buyer beware, but, um, the, the magic system is awesome. Does a RF Kuang does a fantastic job doing the, like, uh, like doing the, like, the, like the embodying the wuja it's in that it's very very visual um but doing yep. it in a in a narrative way that is super satisfying um there's a a bunch of you know great references to uh you know the both you know classical like you know uh journey to the west and also just like very like famous martial like martial arts films and stories um i can't recommend it enough but i also acknowledge it is it is not for everybody um so if you if you've got a a, a thick skin, um, and a and a strong stomach when it comes to reading, definitely give it a shot. Um, and also the uh the audiobook is read by the uh, the same voice actress that played uh Pan Am in twenty seventy seven. Ooh, so okay. She's fan and fan she does a fantastic job. But cool. um, I think with that, that is about our time. We're coming in at just over an hour. Um, for those of you that tuned in and stuck around, uh, thank you for doing so. Chat, it's always lovely to see you, you know, uh, you cashing in and giving your, your, your comments and takes, uh, for those of you watching this in the future, thank you for watching. Um, I, as always, am your disheveled host, Alexander Maxwell. You can find me in the Cyber Nation Uncensored Discord. You can find me at Twitter at Alex R. Maxwell. Um, and I, of course, joined by Gome and Rem, my lovely hosts, uh, Rem, where can they find you online? Oh, gosh, everywhere. Uh, I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash master of Rem. I'm on uh, Facebook as Rem Alternus. I'm on Twitter as Rem Alternus. Uh, we just live streamed to the Catalyst uh, YouTube page today. Overlords and Training is live on Kickstarter. And um, uh, I really love this project because it's a board game um, by uh, a kid that built it with his dad. It's about to graduate high school and he's got developmental disabilities and this game helped him survive high school. Oh. Um, so really love this uh, this game. Um, so you can find that as Overlords in Training on Kickstarter. And yeah, I'm everywhere. And uh, Gome, can they find um, you online? Yeah, look, I exist online. I, I have a YouTube channel, The Impossible Emporium. I have the same for a website, theimpossibleemporium.com. It's I have a Twitter account, but like I, I check it once every two or three years. <laughs> go, oh yeah, that exists, and go back to it, and then go, uh, yeah, I don't want to be here. It's um, Twitter, yeah. Yeah, well, social media for me is a bit of an anathema. It's just what it is, you know. Um, but, you know, I post random articles every so often um, on the blog and I'm trying to put, I'm playing with video, let's put it that way, because I, I muck around with 3D animation. I like doing cool little things and stuff to entertain myself, really. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, well, that was the show, everybody. Uh, thank you to Cyber Nation Uncensored for being our glorious hosts. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Cyber Nation Uncensored late at night or in the afternoon, depending on where the hell you are. Um, that's it for us, and we will be seeing you later. So take care, everybody. Bye. Cyber Nation Uncensored.